Awesome. Okay. Welcome everybody to reverse engineering at Toaster in Shaper 3D. Before we continue, uh, I will quickly introduce to you the, the process I used to digitize the Toaster model. There are actually two very low cost effective approaches. Um, I'm holding this right now into the camera. One option, for example, is to get a structure sensor, which is an add-on to the iPad. And then through the software, you can kind of like by walking around on the fly, digitize an object. This is actually really very good for bigger objects, not so good necessarily for smaller objects. However, for the iPad, um, another option is a program called Trinio. What is really nice about that program is it uses photogrammetry and it allows you to have the ability to um, take photos. So you, you see here in the application various models and for example, here's a toaster. And if I open and I can move around, there you see an actual 3D object. The, the way how this process works is you take a series of photos, basically walking around the object, and then you uh, let the software create a 3D model based on the photos. And you want to take a look at an object from all different directions. You can see, for example, down here, um, right under the dial, it's black. I didn't take a photo from it, so the software couldn't create a mesh there. That was fine in my case. And you might ask yourself what's going on with my toaster. It's a white object and glossy. That's not very good for photogrammetry. So I used a spray bottle, made it moist, and then I used cinnamon and sprinkled it over it because that then creates a structure the software can uh, use. If you're more interested in it, simply Google photogrammetry. Trinio is one object. There's also Autodesk Recap and uh, a lot of other programs on it. I use this one very often because it is part of the iPad. So that for this, let's go to the um, scan model. Okay, so let me quickly run you through the, the process. Um, this is just only so you understand kind of like the way how I worked. When you import a model, you have to calibrate it, you have to orient it. This is something I will run with you uh, just in a moment. And I use a lot of lines for via symmetries. So you can, for example, perfectly verify is this point and this point, for example, both at the same opposite location on the toaster. So I use these lines a lot from different views, from the top, from the side, or here from the right, to make sure that my object is rotated correctly along multiple different axes. And then also clean objects, for example, like the dial, which is a circle, is very good for a caliper to measure. So I could recreate a geometry or a sketch and then align my scan with the sketch. Now this all sounds a little bit cryptic. So let's get started. So as I said, here is the, the object and it's kind of uh, cricket from the top. You see from the different views. So we need to fix this. So I can go to transform, move, and just we simply slide it over. And we can do a little bit of eyeballing here right now. So it's obviously also a matter of how precise do you want to be? Do you want to use this as just a course of reference? Do you want to be very precise? Do you have to rebuild something? So the process we're doing here right now, this is really up to you to define how far you have to be specific. Okay, so let's 
click OK. I want to do one thing. I have to go back to here for one moment because I need to take one measurement. So for example, here you see I have this one circle. So 1.6 centimeter. That is the one I use to make sure that when I scale my mesh, it is correct. So 1.6 centimeters for the radius. So I could go to here, make sure I'm also, for example, in a unit nine millimeters or centimeters based on how you want to work. I make a circle and then I say, this is 1.6. Okay, so this I will line up to the grid. So I have grid snapping turned on. This is very useful and important. And then I can move this one up. As you can see right now, the sketch is inside my object. So I will via the transform tool, simply move it to somewhere there. Very good, right. And let's say just keep it there for the moment. So that's all good. Now I can go ahead, go say transform and move and rotate, select my scan. I want to be specific from where I will scale to. So the Uh, it doesn't allow me to move this one. Okay, one second. Let's try this again. Transform there. Uh, there, very good. So I snapped it to the circle. And uh, I'm sorry, guys. I just hit done by accident. So now I can go to the right view. And I use the circle simply as a reference. I try to center it correctly. And now I scale my mesh till this lines up. So like this. So now when the circle is 1.6 and I have the, the base scaled up so it fits. I kind of now can assume that my scan is actually to scale. Very good. So a quick uh, run through how I do the rest of the calibration because it looks good, but is the object really correctly rotated, etc. So I could start with the right and draw myself a horizontal line. I make sure this line is always horizontal. Maybe move this line down a little bit. And then I can compare how does uh, this edge to this edge line up to the, on the line. And yeah, it looks pretty close. So we could can assume that this is actually pretty good. Maybe now let's go to the top view. And I would like from the top to see how far I can or should rotate this mesh. First, I will draw a line. This line I select, it's perfectly drawn on the grid, centered, and I lock it. Because what I will do now is I will draw a line here and I draw a line there. These two lines I select, then I say symmetry along this line. And with this, I have now the ability, you see, to reposition these points and then make sure that everything lines up. It actually does there. Let's do the same on the back. So these two lines, symmetry along here. And I move this one down. Here, when I zoom in more, I can snap to smaller or finer grid. And there we can see that the scan is a little bit rotated. So then I could go to transform. 
I will bring this to there. And I moved it to the left because the left side seems to be calibrated well. It's just the right side that is a little bit off. So, and then very gentle. So this is way too much, maybe 0.1. Uh, points, um, 0.15 maybe. This looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in now and I can compare how does this look. I can also do a symmetry this way, so horizontally. Then I could probe, for example, this detail. I could probe this detail. So to all figure out, does this all look good? Okay, and the and, and you can see the more you do this, um, the better. Then basically everything will be calibrated. So, and once we are done, maybe we can also take a look at the height line. So the toaster is a little bit too low. I will just move this up. Very good. And I draw a line and there and there. And this I will move up. Or I could, for example, also just extrude something out. So I can see how does this edge of the toaster and the front edge line up. So is the toaster from this view perfectly uh, aligned up? And as you can see, it is very close. Now this is actually photogrammetry. This is not a laser scan. So everything should be taken with a little bit of grain of salt. So don't be too specific. We will use this rather at the moment for kind of getting very close. So now we can actually start to resurface everything. Okay, so what is the best strategy? This toaster looks pretty, pretty complex. It has a lot of details. We have the opening, we have this handle part, we have dials, we have this uh, punched in area and then slide line, uh, various uh, changes in the fillets, etc. And what I, for example, would like to do is modernize this design a little bit. So this is kind of like an exercise I do sometimes with my students. They have to take an older product and just make it more contemporary. And the task now is, well, how do we start? What is the best step? And I always would try to say, look at this as a block of foam and then think of how can you start carving out all the individual details? So this, this bigger object without the openings and the dial, that is actually just one block we could carve. So let's do this. We also have rounded edges. Um, I will show in a different technique today how I deal with this. So I will start by drawing a rectangle there and there. Then this again, I lock and it's perfectly at the um, grid center. This point I open. And then this point, I want to fuse to the midpoint. So I know when I make this line horizontal, you see my old trick, um, all the lines are perfect. Very good. I can do exactly the same here. So I'll lock this one, delete it, bring this over, make sure this stays horizontal. Very good. So these two lines here, I don't need. And I can now first get closer to there, zoom in maybe a little bit more there, and then try to figure out where plus minus is the, the corner point. Maybe a little bit closer. Okay, good. And I can do the same here. 
The nice thing is via the symmetry thing or setup, I only have to deal with one point. When I move this around, as you can see, the other side updates automatically too. Very good. Okay, so we have these points now and then we want later to do a radius. So how do we do this? Uh, let's go to the spline and we select the fit point first. Because of the fit point spline, what we can do is start, press and release, maybe three points only. So this one I have to bring to there. Uh, I bring this one over, I bring then this one up, try to find where is the correct start point. So actually do not put in the radius, I will do this later differently. And then maybe turn off the grid. Uh, figure out where is maybe that correct position. This is maybe here, there, this looks pretty good. Now I can move this one up and down, zoom in a little bit. There, this starts lining up really nicely. Let's go to here, move this one up to there. Okay, there you can see the curve bellies out a little bit. So this point was close, just not correct. So let's move it to there. Very good. Okay, so we want to have exactly the same um, curve on the other side. So I start drawing, press, terminate, and then I select these two points. Symmetry along this line. Uh, okay, just solve that issue this way, not a big deal. We just have to bring this back. There we are, very good. And then the radius, that is actually something I will do simply via the, um, the arc tool. Before I continue, however, and this is a nice layout, I will go to transform and move. I have just this layout selected, I go to copy. And then I move this one up, go to the front view and try to move it up right where that crease is, somewhat there. So that is good. Click done. When we go to sketches, we can already see we have now two sketches. So we are move and copy. I just created another sketch. I will, with the pencil, select the sketch and with a finger double tap, to zoom onto it. And then I select lower right corner, the cut section view. So now I can see how at the sketch, the mesh intersects and lines up. So that's pretty good. To do these radius now. And before I continue, I wanna turn on snap to grid again. And I will just reapply that symmetry grid block and horizontal vertical there and lock horizontal. Very good. And yeah, then I will select these points. And for the moment, simply lock them so they cannot be moved because the proportions is good. These points I don't need to move uh, fix because these are locked already. So then I can go ahead and via an arc, create an arc. So like a curved motion with my hand and the pencil, line this up, maybe lower this dimension, maybe increase this a little bit. You see it hmm, doesn't really line up well, well, because this arc is just connected with the endpoints to these lines, but they're not tangent. So let's tap tangent, same here, tangent. And now, as you can see, 
we can move and expand this one 2.6 for the radius we can decide here so quick step here again tangent and tangent the reason why I locked these blinds before was so when I create these arcs and make them tangent they do not deform the rest of my sketch then those for example we make equal and this one we say 2.6 so when this one is adjusted let's say to four you see the lower one adjusts too pretty good then we do the same here and tangent tangent and then again an equal constraint you want to set up these sketches in a smart way minimize the amount of work as much as possible try to work with the constraint tools to automate all your tasks and then this way, modifying everything will be a lot easier. Good. So maybe I make this one 2.5, uh, 2.4, 2.4 there. So I have a little bit of an offset there that seems to follow that shape much better. Very good. So that's kind of like the first profile. That is really nice. So uh, we turn this off. We then actually have to do now the next uh, step that is on top. So I go to transform, move, double tap. So I selected this whole sketch, make a copy, go to the front view there. Okay. And then I move this one up you there I draw it a little bit bigger on purpose now this previous sketch I can hide now again with the pencil select the sketch double tap I cannot turn on cut section because essentially it doesn't really make sense and it doesn't really show anything there but I can now see plus minus the um, the upper part of my toaster so this whole sketch I will select for the moment and I could lock or I could modify it. So let's modify it. So this one we lock, this one we lock, then this line I bring over. And you see then this actually changes. So we have to first reestablish our tangencies. Very good. And then when we bring this one over there, uh, uh, that works to a certain degree. Very good. So let's do the same there. Then we can bring this edge over to there, okay. And in cases like here, you see something flunked, not a big deal. And sometimes it's easier to delete certain parts. Um, this point is actually not constrained to there. So for the moment, I will just delete those. Okay. So you might ask yourself, well, why did you do this? Well, because this is a smart sketch solver and only had a certain amount of constraints, there were some problems that simply by nature happened. And I find it very often to be very effective. Well, and just redo it and instead of trying to fix things. I do this literally uh, a lot. It's always faster. So this point again is locked. Then we made the midpoint connection. This is vertical and now we can bring this point down to there. The rest is in a symmetry. So you see, we just very quickly rebuilt the same thing. Okay. Now also here, bring this down. Uh -huh. You see then there, 
we have to pull this in, make this horizontal. Very good. And these two points, there we bring this one down. Now it shows us that this one can go down a little bit. There we are, very good. Okay, as before, we lock everything and then we create the arcs, tendencies. This point actually is too tight. So I will, I will open this and move this one up there. See, because there all my constraints were perfect, the, um, that arc I drew in into the corner flew with it perfectly. There. Let's do the same here very quickly. Okay, one more time. There. Okay, so what dimension do we have here? Let's say 1.25. And then we do as before the equal constraints again to make sure that they're all the same. And I don't have to just modify four different dimensions all the time. Good, so this is pretty much done too. Let me show you one alternative way. So there we have this one. I go to transform and move and double tap everything. And bring this one down to the front there. Maybe I bring this down till there. Very good. Finger tap. And oh, I wanna look at this from the bottom now. So we could also, with this selected and locked, then create an offset. And for example, as you can see here, I do all these offsets. I could do this cleanly and then I would go in and trim and snap all these parts away, which is um, work too. And this is basically why for the top one, I simply redrew the whole design so that I didn't need to uh, do this type of a cleanup. And this is really more like a process question. So it's really up to you to decide. There is no one is correct and one is not correct. Oh, let's quickly redo. I did not make a copy when I moved this one. There. Okay, so this one we have, and there's our bottom sketch. That's the last one now, which we have to modify. Very good. So let's select this line, vertical. Okay, this is all good. This has to go in just a notch, and this has to go in a notch and then this we can bring in the whole arc and you see that actually the whole part adjusted there and then again select everything lock it and we would do the the sketch part i will leave this at the moment because i want to continue focus on the top part if we have time then we will finish the lower sketch and build the lower part um, but again, you get the whole design. Um, so when you have any questions after this webinar and you struggle a little bit, feel free to digest, uh, for example, the finished model. It has all the sketches in it and essentially the way how I structure today's webinar, then you can completely see the same approach. 
Very good. So let's go back to here. And let's get started with some of the surfacing. So this one we don't need. Good. I can go ahead now and we are loft and loft this and this surface together. I have to select this one there. The mesh was a little bit in my way. Very good. There. Nice. And let's show me the body. So there we can compare how far does this all align up. Is this good? Let's go to a chart view, turn on, for example, the cut section view. Then there you can see how this actually partially intersects. There, very good. And the top is flat. However, in my model, this is art. So we need to put in the detail for that too. This is a nice curve, nice and smooth. We will continue with the fit point. So click, click, and click. Then I draw this one up and up, connect this, and position all these points where I think they have to go to. Maybe I turn the snap here off for the moment so it's easier to move these parts around. There, that is pretty close. Very good. And one last move down here. There, and this can even go further out a little bit. And this then now can go in. There, very good. So this profile or sketch I created, I can use to cut the top part. The way I do this with the pencil, I select the surface, move this up, select this icon here and say new body. So 12 millimeter one side, select the other, another 12, so 24. Very good, there we have it. Then we go ahead, tools, and say subtract. U minus this one. We don't need to keep the original, I want to get rid of it. There's our top part that is nicely cut. Very good. Because at the end we want to end up with a shell, I really treat this as a, a volume block uh, and only cut in step by step all the different parts I need. Next element to cut out would be the space. So I can also from that then create the handle part. So when I select this face with my finger, double tap, because it was a straight loft between two sketches and straight edges, this is kind of like uh, a flat surface. No, it's not kind of like, it is a flat surface and allows me to create a sketch on it. So there's my construction plane. Let's turn on the scan object, hide the other off object. I will also go to sketches and hide this one. And then let's go ahead and draw a line. Maybe want to turn on snap to grid there. This is actually a spline. Make an arc. Connect this. Oh, <laughs> perfect radius. Here I connect this and then I draw from the midpoint on the grid to the midpoint to the line. This is vertical lined up. This is all horizontal, so, so it's all good. So now this is actually symmetrical. There we see, very good. Maybe this point we can move down a little bit if we want. But you see, hmm, this actually doesn't move. Well, these two points we can also make symmetrical to that line. And then this actually moves in tandem. Very good. Mm -hmm. 
Now, next step, this. I can extrude, let's say by minus two. Okay, well, then uh, the next would be to go to bodies. I had my scan object. Here's my original object. To help the software, I could also build this up a little bit. And I will transform. I have here a flat surface. So double tap the whole object, make a copy, move this over one, turn copy off, move this back. Okay, hide copy. And I also just realized I'm working in millimeters. So this is a tiny um, toaster. Uh, so sorry for this. I just realized it myself because of the beginning of the webinar hiccup. I overlooked this. Well, we can always scale this later by 10. Then the object is to scale. That's a nice thing about CAT. So what did I make two copies? Well, one copy is actually the toaster. And the other copy is the, um, the level. So we go to one copy and say subtract this one. I would like this being removed, but keep the tool in this case. And you see, this is cut. But hey, my angles are actually, or these sides are at an angle. So let's undo this step. And I want to show you this. That's pretty cool. Can go to transform, select these two edges. Maybe go this way. What happens when we do a scale? Bang, there. And also this part got scaled. So maybe that mm, looks good, but it's not really what I want. So instead of doing it this way, I could also select just this line and move this in, let's say by 0.8, so the same here, 0.8, very good. And then the same also here, 0.8, yeah. So everything is kind of like rotated. Okay, so let's go back. Subtract there, next, this one, keep the original. And there we have the cut, including these beautiful angles. Then this hide there, show this, tools. And then we say intersect you and you. There, this is now the leftover part. But now we need to figure out, well, how big is actually that level? So this object we hide, show the, the scan again. Okay, so it's roughly there. Let's make a line. And maybe this line I move up a little bit to there. Let's say here. Good. Then let's hide this. This we show. And we can select the result of the sketch and then cut it out. Very good. So you see the top surface is nicely rotated and the bottom is horizontal. And also there, if we don't like this necessarily, we can select this and for example, move it. But hey, be careful. You see it then actually changes the geometry. So in that case, we uh, we could go and do a side sketch. Let's quickly do this. So, okay. And we will hide this. By the way, let's give these names. So level, otherwise you are always guessing what object is what. Let me go to a right view, front view, there, very good. And maybe 
Should be nice for the fingers, so an arc. Maybe like this, that could be good. Okay, and here then, remove this up. There again, for the moment, let's go to your body. So four, four, this will be then 8.8. .8. And tools, subtract u minus this one. There it's cut out. Very good. So the surface will be comfortable for my fingers and even later we can adjust the radius to, as you can see, 2.5 or maybe 2.25. Good. So wrong orientation, wah, wah. we have to do the thing here. So kind of like this orientation, then we make these two tangent, very good. And then this point we can move around. and close the sketch. Good. New body, I'm the same here. You can also simply drag it up. Essentially, it doesn't really matter. We're just simply using this to cut the space out. There, very good. Okay, nice. So you see very, very slowly, step by step, um, I'm building all these individual details. Now we have the cuts on the top. How do we do those? Actually, we do not do those yet. We want this to be shelled. So um, you notice that the only detail I added in was this cavity and not the top part, because this is one thing you need to be um, careful about. Think about all the different steps. So if we shell this now, we actually have sharp edges. So we want these edges to round first. So I will select these vertical edges around them, maybe 1.25. Okay, then this allows me to round this edge 0.5, that looks good. Then I can round this 0.5. Very good. And then I will round this one 0.25. One moment. No, oh, okay. Undo. This is a very complicated task 0.25 filleting. I always should do that at the end, kind of like when appropriate, like in this case. So all these upper details are done. Now I can go to tools and shell, select my lower face. Next thickness should be two millimeters, but one millimeter, so dot two zero. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. So if we would scale this up by 10, then this would be two millimeter material thickness. And let's do a cut section view. Look at that, doesn't that look really nice? Great. Okay, now for example, we could do the cut on the top. So we will go to bodies, hide this one, show our uh, other object, go to top. I will quickly draw a sketch here, very basic there, and then select it. Instead of making a construction plane and then putting this onto the construction plane, I simply create myself a sketch and then move this up because the sketches work like a construction plane. So this is a little bit different than when you used to work with SolidWorks. Double tap, and there's my construction plane, very good. And now I can continue from the grid 
as before, lock this one, make sure this is horizontal, this is vertical, vertical, horizontal, horizontal, very nice. Then this I can bring over, this I bring over, I just wanna find the correct opening for the grill slot there. Very good, not too bad. Okay, what's the overall size? Let's say 12, good. So this is a, a very basic sketch. Take a look at what I'm doing now. So I will show my toaster. I will select this, cut the opening. I will say, hey, these edges aren't rounded. Well, I could put this obviously into the sketch but that makes me more work. I could simply also make just a box and then I select all these sharp corners. Obviously select the correct corners there and then we fill it this as needed. Maybe point uh, not point, let's say maybe two centimeters. Very good. Let's take a look at the scan. Yeah, that's close. So if we want to adjust this even more, we can, with the pencil, select that surface. So you see it gives us the dimension for that fillet. And then we adjust both surfaces at the same time, 2.5, there, very good. Okay, so that opening there is done. We also have an opening here for the slot so that other sketch you now we can reuse, where is it? Also here naming the sketches is very useful. There, I selected the sketch, double tap on it and draw myself a line. There, 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 and there. Here again, you, you, symmetry to this line. So I can simply work only on one side and I don't have to deal with the other element that is pretty close. Bring this one down to there. Okay. Toaster and now in our design, we have to change this a little bit. And then I can select the inside extrude it and when it intersects it cuts through it. Let's see what is the distance. 0 0.1. That was good to know because no one could go in and say you and you please fill it. And we make those 0.1. So 0.1 plus 0 0.1, 0 0.2 looks like a circle. Very nice, very good. So you see how step-by-step step I am actually adding all the individual details. So how did we do this? I didn't remember all the sizes for the fillers, but again, you see here, we can just click on the surface. So this is uh, 0.5, which means then those have to be 0.5 too, to be flush and this one and this one, I can make 0.5, I can make those 0 0.25, 0 0.3, so everything you know 
we run. You see also the strategy I use, how selectively I round it individual corners. For those who are struggling with how to round corners, it's literally one over the other one. So the verticals first, so then I can then round these edges. Take a cube and start rounding all these individual edges so you see how this works. And there we are, pretty awesome. Looks nice and cute. Hmm, this is not correct. Well, not a big deal. We select that surface and just push it in more as much as we, for example, need. I leave it at there for the moment because we are actually running slowly out of time. So next object, the dials. Dials are interesting because they are at an angle. Let's see, where is my circle? Did I delete that circle? Yeah, maybe I did. Okay, no big deal. Let's re-add that circle and I'll show you then another nice construction tool how Shaper does it. So 1.6, circle. 1.6, should have been 16. <laughs> that was my fault. We said this one is inside the object, so I will move this one up. Move it up. I also go to a side view now. So there, bring it up to there. I bring it to the front first, because here it's easy to understand the orientation of how that dial is. And now I slide this one back till there. Okay, very good. Now that seems to be kind of it. And I'll just move it to there for the moment. Click OK. Go back to bodies. And this one I would like to height. I can do one double check. So if I want this to be super flush, now you see here I can zoom in more and just make this aligned to my, my object, 0.5, 0 0.75, yeah, this looks better. And move this one out, good. So why did I move this one out? Very simple reason. I would like to create a sketch so I could revolve this dial, but I need to find the vector. And the circle first was a nice tool to rotate and then also find the scale. But what I go to add and say construction axis type and say uh, perpendicular to a face at a point. Look what happens now. So, Uh, wait, did I select the wrong one? Yeah, perpendicular at a face. There. There. It found actually the face and then I found the point. Because it's a circle, I can obviously snap to the edge, but I can snap to the midpoint. So, could also have created a cylinder and then made also construction through um, through like a cylinder or cone, same thing, and then select the cylinder later and delete it because that was only a helper. This construction line, however, is very useful. So when I go to back, I will turn this one on, turn this off. I can create uh, my cut section view again. There you see it. So we see that the top part is bellied in a little bit. I will draw myself a line, snap to that construction line. Then I can make these two uh, perpendicular. Oh, that is a line I see, a uh, curve. Now this should be just a line. So this line and this line, they are perpendicular. Then I can create an arc. Uh, 
this point I move to somewhere here, lock it for the moment, select these two and say tangent, bring this back there. So what did I create this line? This line is perpendicular to here and this arc is tangent to this line, which basically means if we revolve this arc along this axis, it will create into a perfect uh, spherical shape. That's the main reason behind it. So we have a dial that's kind of like a, a cylinder. So this line I create, select this line and say parallel because this line as a cylinder has to rotate along this axis. And then I can connect this, these two tangent. Can move this one up or down to there. Very good. Maybe bring this down a little bit there. And we don't really know anything about the internal construction. So let's simplify this a little bit. There we are. Then tools, revolve and select this around you there. Look at this. There's actually now a nice dial. Obviously this dial we could also cut out. So from this object, I would like this to be cut out, but keep the original. So I have the opening. And then I could round the edge where the dial actually uh, touches the, the surface, the toaster. We can round this one too. Okay, very nice. And we also have, that's another tool where the, this axis will become very useful. We also have an add-on, kind of like a small nipple and then some, some cavities. So you see, there it is. I will do this simply in this case, maybe with a control point curve. So you click, click, and click. Very good. Move this one up, move this one over there. And I will bring this one to there and draw a line. You might ask yourself, well, what was that line for? Because I need this for my revolve axis. So tools, revolve, and say this surface plus this surface next along this. There we are. Very good. Like this, show this, and there you see there's that part. But before we add this one, let's do a few modifications. First, I will select the whole object and I sink it in just a tiny bit. So I have a better intersection there. And the tip is actually not on the surface. Good. Now I also would like to create some rotations. So I will go to the um, cut section, turn this off, transform, rotate, select the whole object. And then I move this to there, copy. See the, I snap to that, to the construction axis. So when I now say 45 degrees or 90 degrees there as a copy, very good. And turn copy off. And I would like to move this one out a little bit. Maybe a tick more nah, like this, very good. Now we can continue. and make another another 90 and one more 90 so 180 there okay obviously we can also go 45 degrees so we can cut more individual objects then tools 
and union. U and U join together. Tools and subtract. So from this, I would like this one, this one, and this one removed. You see there were these cutouts. Pretty cool. I think via the move command, no, we are not limited to where that part is. So you see we can sync these in, so we can move the even out. We can also scale this. So direct modeling is pretty awesome. I didn't like how close it was to the end there. Very good. And we can round these corners then to 0.1 here, there, and there. Let's do the same, not chamfer, 0.1. Okay, very good. Let's go to a top view and show everything else. There, cool. So I hope so far you saw how methodically I approach everything. I don't start at a tiny detail. I really start very basic and then step by step by step at all the individual objects. So the, um, to create these smaller buttons here, um, this circle I have, we can actually reuse. So I don't even create another sketch necessarily. That's not really that needed. Then I make this smaller and you see, I just do some direct modeling because the geometry I can constrain to bring this closer, bring this up. Is the, the size and proportion correct? Plus minus it is the position there, not yet. There it is. Show me the rest. Very good. So uh, I wanna select this inner surface and just e extend it, not as much there. Then click okay. We round this one, point 0.1. Oh, we could also, hey, do this. We do a chamfer, 0.15. And then those we around. Very good. Select everything with the move command, copy, and just move the copy down to where it should be. Very good. And then here again, subtract from the frame, cut those two buttons out. But always make sure you're not by accident, like what I did delete your part, so keep original. And then these tiny details here, we can round. So we get a nice chamfer there. Okay, so we're somewhat slowly reaching the end of our, our webinar. So the bottom part, I think people will understand it's the same process of uh, another sketch that has to be smaller and then we loft it to create the, the element where the toaster kind of like goes in. This is actually pretty, pretty easy. So let's focus on this maybe for a moment. I need to find the correct sketch for that. There, so this sketch I need, the rest can all go. Very good, there we are. I wanna make sure all this there and we can lock those. I create quickly an opening here, there and there. You and you, they should be the same, equal and you and you be symmetry to this line. So you see this all updates exactly the same. Now I can perfect this, make sure these are all at their correct distances from the edge. Very good. And 
this whole thing I select and extrude down all together. Because I was touching the surface, uh, so new body, very good. These edges we have to round. I think we set those to 2.5, yep, 2.5, very good. There you see it's flush. Then now with those selected, we can cut into this area. And where is my side cut sketch? There it is. And we I use this sketch to extrude a new body out. And subtract this one minus this one. There, it's removed. Very good. My sketches are somewhat in my way. So what's the distance? Uh, 1.18. I have to be precise of clicking on these edges because I'm trying to be fast. Now I'm a little bit missing the point. So how do we do the correct radius so that these arcs are also really the same. So essentially it's the outer arc uh, minus also the distance. And that would be then the inner arc. So when this is like, let's say two millimeters distance and it's 1.5, then this would be 1.3. Okay. And for the toes to slide in nicely, Want to round this well, and then also the outsides. So this edge, we round a little bit, and then we can do the same also here. They also should not touch, so there's no heat transfer. And if we want, even here, we could select this face move this over by, oh, what did I have here? 0 0.02 and, and then I go to the other side, do the same. Uh, 0 0.02, so that each one is exactly the same cool okay so that kind of like sums up most of the stuff we had 12 13 we we're a little bit over time sorry for this and the beginning of the accidents i hope you however enjoyed the rest and how i structured resurfacing this toaster based on the scan model and updating it